Today I want to talk about how you calculate the day and hour because it's Wednesday and quite honestly you need a little hoed if you want to get this stuff right. On the surface it's really simple. There are 12 hours in a day and there are seven spheres that are eight that are given their numbers. So you start at dawn on Wednesday. The hour is for hoed, the day is for hoed or mercury. Then you move through the next seven or six spheres. When you get to the eighth hour of the day, it's Hoed or Mercury again. And then you keep counting. Well, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, we got three left. So you don't hit the third hour of night until you have Mercury again coming back into power. Now, you want to do a sphere in the day and the hour of the day, which means it has to be done in the first hour after dawn, the eighth hour of the day, or the third hour of the night. That means, pretty simply, you figure out when dawn is and there you go. A couple minutes after dawn just to make sure you got it right for your time zone because Ann Arbor and Detroit have a slightly different sunrise, but I give it five minutes and I go if I'm doing it in the first hour of the day. If I'm doing it in the third hour of the night, and on the 21st of September, it's easy. You find out when sunset is, and then you count two hours in, and that third hour is the hour of hope, or Mercury, on Wednesday. And on Thursday, the third hour is Jupiter, or Hesed. And on Friday, the third hour after dark is the same as the day is. The problem comes is we, in the Northern Hemisphere, as opposed to other parts of the world, because on the equator they get it easy, we change the length of our days and nights. So when it gets away from September 21st, it's not quite so simple. The tree, or Kabbalism, defines an hour as one-twelfth of a time period. So one-twelfth of the time it's dark is an hour, so you have to figure out when sunset is, on the day you're working, and when sunrise is the next day, count how many minutes are there between them and divide it by 12. And then you take from sunset 63 minutes or 65 minutes. And sometimes when it's really tedious, like 71, and you're like, oh my God, am I ever going to get there? Ironically, it doesn't really change when you do the ritual that much because right now it's roughly seven o'clock sunset and nine to ten is when you could do the ritual. When you get a five o'clock sunset, you wind up with an hour and ten minutes. So then you're six ten, seven twenty. So I guess seven twenty is earlier than nine o'clock, but it's not a big difference. You're always going to be in this range from like seven to ten. Um, but it's easiest to start in the fall. And so right now, as we enter the beginning of October and everybody's orange and hoed, I wanted to talk about how to make sure you do it. Because if you do it now, that it's a lot easier to do it right as you go through the year. So pick the day you want to work. Each day has a planet associated with it. And six of those days have one sphere associated. On Saturday, we have two. Saturday, you have both Malkut, which is called the Princess or the Little Queen, and Bana, which is ruled by Saturn, and is called the Great Queen or the Dark Mother. So you, can du you double up, and it's actually really important that you are the most careful working on a Saturday, because you would not want to open Bana by accident. Bana is a, the first sphere across the abyss, and as I may have mentioned before, it's the only time you should ever wear black in a sphere. Working with Malkuth, people wear brown. Sometimes they wear citrine or olive or another color that's basically dirty. <laughs> Purple, dirty green. Sorry. No, that's olive is dirty green, sorry. Anyway, when you get the colors of Malkuth, Malkuth is the only sphere that doesn't have one color. It has four separate colors. It is the black for Bana, and then a dirty orange, yellow, and green that matches the spheres that surround it. So, whichever day you're working, except for Saturday, you have one color, one day, one hour, one number 
for Ho then, we would start ritual. Today it's about 9.15. We would start ritual on 9.15. We would be wearing orange or any color but black. We would have eight candles. We would have the incense and this, a sigil, which is the easiest to do when you're doing, or very easy to do when you're doing hoed, because you're gonna, when the hour begins, cut an eight-sided figure and inscribe Mercury sigil on one side and the Archangelic sigil on the other, and then Mercury sigil on one side and the Spirit sigil, and then Mercury and then the Intelligence is sigil. As you create each of these sigils in the hour, you want to be focusing on that energy. Often I'll have already lit the incense to make that energy move more freely. And then when all the things are prepared, I go ahead and open the sphere, lighting each of the candles and incensing them and pulling that energy from the incense and anchoring it into the candle so the space is held for me. And move around the circle in a clockwise fashion, sometimes as a discipline, and Hode's always about intellectual disciplines, I will make sure I always turn clockwise, that no motion I make goes with or shins or against the energy, because most work in the tree is done diosol or clockwise. So you've calculated the hour. The nicest part is that once you've calculated the hour and gotten your preparation done, open the sphere. The sphere can last as long as you want. It can go on for six hours. And more important, you can have more than one candle. So share with a friend, make a second intelligence of Mercury or Archangelic candle and give it to them when they need to study. But always keep your own. That energy builds. For more information, find my website, tarotjane.com or find me on Facebook, Tarot Jane, or Traveling the Tree with Jane Pierce.